Hey guys, Mel here with update number two for the British forces, the Chindits. Okay, now I have been busy painting these. Uh, I've managed to complete my pledge just by the skin of my teeth. Yeah, and I've completed a full platoon. So here they are. Don't they look gorgeous? So obviously this is the full platoon. Breaking it down, you've got my very first squad. And then the second squad that I've just finished painting. And then finally, here's my lieutenant with his little woolly jumper. Middle of the Burmese jungle and he's still wearing a jumper, for God's sake. <laughs> Typical Brits. Anyway, guys, that's my, where I'm up to with my painting. So I've not had to take any real life passes or anything like that. So I'm quite pleased about that. Now I'm making a pledge for my next update, which will be in three to four weeks time, depending on whether we get a hangout or a battle report or something in between our updates. Dave's going on holiday. John's quite busy. It's a busy time of year. Yeah, so maybe three weeks. So I'm aiming at three. But if we have a hangout before, but this is what I'm doing for my next update. And in here we have uh, a medium mortar team. Yeah, uh, Vickers MMG team, medium machine gun team, and uh, what's your radio guy, which I'm going to be using as my uh, forward forward observer. Okay, which you get free as the British forces, and you know the Chindits were were pretty big into their air support, so I'll be upgrading. I'll be getting more forward observers as soon as I can. So that's my update. Yeah, that's where I am painting wise, etc. And I'm really getting into it. I'm getting into the background of the game. You know, the boys are talking that the, the scrap talks already started, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now before we seem to have got into this little habit of giving a bit of background, yeah, as we go with these updates. Yeah. And so Here's a little bit of background about Burma. So before I actually jump into the Chindits and the forces and their actions that they actually took part of, yeah, I want to explain you know, why Burma was so important in the Pacific campaign for both the Allies and for the Japanese. Okay, now, first you've got to realise where Burma is. And if you've got Japan here, yeah, you've got Korea here, then you've got all China here, you've got sort of Thailand here, you've got Burma there, and then India there. Now the reason this was important is that one of the biggest threats to Japan, yeah, was China, yeah, because it was huge, it was, you know, they could launch attacks from China, yeah, without, with relative ease and in relative safety because of the size of the country, okay, and the amount of manpower, but China at the time was, it wasn't industrialised, they didn't have what we call, you know, a military art, you know, not a military, uh, an industrialised force, you know, it's very much a peasant country, and I don't mean that to be derogatory in any way, as in the sort of level of in industry that was going on in China. Now, China was in on the war with the, the Chinese National Army, yeah, and they were on the side of the Allies, and they were getting supported by the Allies, the Brits, the Americans, yeah, and they were getting supplies and training and weapons, etc. But this was all going through the old Burma Road, which ran through the centre of Burma. Yeah, so for the Japanese, for them to seize Burma and break that supply route effectively took the Chinese threat out. Yeah, I mean, there were other ways they could supply him, but the old Burma Road was the biggest and the easiest. And by taking control of that, they watched, they were able to completely stop the threat from China. And, you know, from the Allies' point of view, yeah, Burma being right next to British-held colonial India, OK, was a major threat because it was the next step. I mean, they'd already taken Singapore when they'd come in. They'd made a, the, the Japanese had made a peace treaty with the with the Taiwanese and they they come in through Thailand and just stormed all the way up through Burma. And, you know, the British fought, you know, did their best to, to fight back. But the forces that were in Burma at the time, they were inexperienced compared to the battle hardened forces of uh, 18th Battalion of the 15th Army of the um, Imperial Japanese Army. I think that's right. Yeah. When they came in, they were battle hardened. So it was a hell of a fight. And, you know, the Brits just couldn't hold back. So they fought 
a fighting retreat. Now they did get a few, what you call it, a few reinforcements in there, two light tank regiments and some troops from the Middle East, yeah, but it was too little too late. The majority of the, the reinforces that were reinforcements that were heading to Burma, they got redirected to Singapore and arrived at Singapore just in time to, yeah, to march straight into Japanese prisoner of war camps. Yeah, they were redirected at Churchill's specific orders to hold Singapore, but they were a bit too late and so, you know, the reinforcements weren't there to hold Burma. So the Japanese pushed, yeah, the British all the way back to the top of Burma, to the north of Burma. And at the very north, Burma is a very jungly place, yeah, it's, you know, it's got monsoon seasons, you know, as as the British fought the retreat, a monsoon season opened up, which made the conditions horrific. They were harassed by the local Burmese population, which didn't particularly like you know that the British because of the colonial aspects and you know they were helping the Japanese and they got all the way to the top of, uh, of Burma and when they got to the top of the Burma running across the top of Burma is a massive mountain range and then at the foot of the mountain range is the Chinwin River okay and this will come up a few times in these conversations these locations yeah but the Japanese pushed and took control of the Chinwin River and then basically stopped there they were fatigued they were knackered yeah they were They've been in battle for a long time and they needed resupply. Monsoon season had kicked in. The, they weren't expecting a counterattack because both sides pretty much accepted that the Burmese what you mountain range was unpassable to a large military force. Yeah, small for, small forces, that sort of thing. Yeah, you yeah, know, small people, yeah, not a problem. But you know, a large invasion wasn't a threat. So once the Japanese got the Chinwin River, they decided, right, let's sit and chill and you know sit the monsoon season out, recuperate, ready for the push into India. Now, I did say that, you know, you couldn't sort of launch an attack, you know, across these mountains. And the Japanese were hoping and expecting a, a, a national rebellion in India against the British Raj. Yeah. Uh, partly with the assistance of a distant relative of mine. Yeah, but we'll cover that in a different different video. That's quite interesting. Yeah, mate, been a bit matey with a guy who's a bit matey with Adolf Hitler and a few things like that. So I'll cover that in a future video. But what they were hoping is to basically support a national rebellion and then move across peacefully once the rebellion was in place and disrupting British sort of defences in India. Yeah, so Burma for them was not any resources like any other sort of territory you might seize. Yeah, but it was breaking that supply line to China. Yeah, and it was setting themselves up and supporting the insurrection in India. Okay, and that's why Burma was really, really, really important to the Japanese army. And also to the British army and to the Allies because they needed China in the fight. They didn't have the manpower. Yeah, they had the tools, they had the weapons, they didn't have the manpower in the region because of their commitments in Europe, okay, and also commitments in the Middle East and Africa, etc. And so, yeah, they had a problem. Now, the general in charge of the overall theatre was a guy called General Waverley, yeah, and he knew a bloke called Ord Wingate. Yeah, and he reckoned he could do the job. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to talk about Ord Wingate in the next video, yeah, and well, that's where the chindits come in okay so that's the reason that's the, the setup that's what's going on okay that's why the japanese army were in burma okay and that's why burma was so important so me dave and john we're going to be battling this out yeah and you know seeing if we can change the tide of the war guys right guys so that's burma yeah that's my update on the models really tough with those yeah uh obviously i've got more to paint and i will be painting and I will be painting. I'm not taking a real life pass. I can't risk by having to buy the beer at the watch call it at the at the next sort of get together. So guys, uh, keep your eyes tuned. The next update on next Wednesday will be John McLeod and his US Merrill Marauders. Yeah, it's his first unit. He's coming into the game late, so you know make sure you check the video and give the guy some support. And then it'll be Dave after that. Right, guys, you have a great one, and we'll see you soon. All the best. Yeah, ta. -da.